And we're back. We are back. Hey everybody, I'm Heroic Nerd. Welcome to my channel. This is the Atlas Comics playlist where we will be continuing the Phoenix today. Uh, this guy's an alien superhero with a super suit that gives him super special alien radioactive powers. It's very hard to explain, but he's interesting. He's not bad. I'm not mad at him. And in this issue, we are going to the Phoenix enters the Valley of the Devil. Where even the man of tomorrow can meet death today. I know how I feel about that, but look at these monsters, man. This is this is all a bit much, don't you think? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about all this, but uh, I'm a little bit excited. Let's get some schlock going. Yeah, this is, this is good. Okay. Settle in here. Whew. A morning sun fires its way through the snow-capped Himalayas and a Nepalese village awakens to the warmth of its golden rays. It can be argued that this quaint, timeless terrain is the closest thing to paradise. But before the marketplace bickering has barely begun, a nightmare descends upon the unsuspecting villagers. Well, you're not the only olive merchant in town. No, but I am the most reasonable. A nightmare that will soon reduce the mountain city to rubble. Are those monsters? I think those are monsters and they're heading to the village. The day of the devil. Abominable snowmen, the devil has sent them. It is true then. The Yeti attack here as they did in the south. They come as if on a mission. These shaggy creatures of legends and those who resist them are killed. The rest are carried off. Many hours later, half a world away, the same relentless sun rises over a small Texas town. Ed Tyler, the phoenix, surveys the scene from a new perspective. Well, my new career can wait, and while I have superpowers, they don't stop me from getting hungry. Besides, I'm sick of Tang. Some greasy ham and eggs may be just what the doctor ordered. Okay, so he's, he's evolved, and he's become casual superhero man now. Which, I'm not mad about that. That, that... It might be interesting. Hmm. The wire services are calling me a hero. The mayor of New York wants to have a Phoenix Day. It's nice to know. Say, what is this about abominable snowman? Hey, ain't he the dude who saved New York? Shoot, I bet he is. I wonder what he's doing this far west. Don't reckon them aliens are in Texas, do ya? Phoenix, uh, I'm with the Rangers. Oh, I'm sorry, officer. Am I causing too much of a commotion? Oh, that's not it at all. I was just wondering if you could scribble your name on this here pad. It would it would tickle my wife so. Oh, man. He's famous. People love him. And that's good. I'm happy for the guy because he was really miserable in the last one. Especially, you know, him reuniting with his wife. It created a tremendous amount of catharsis in the story. And I'm not mad at it. After a hearty commotion-filled breakfast, Phoenix takes to the skies. It's funny, the newspapers haven't associated Tyler with Phoenix yet. It's probably because no close-up photos were taken of me over New York. And speaking of the press, maybe I'd better look into that abominable snowman thing. The wire services are making a big deal out of it. And then in a matter of minutes, Phoenix has flown to the Far East, the land of mystic revelation. My god, I don't know any abominable snowman, but this is a pillage. But this, this pillage is incredible. He didn't have to say this twice. A short time later, after Ed Tyler has kicked through the rubble that had once been a lively little village, the bodies are so badly muted, mutilated as if they were badly torn apart by some savage beast. Get away, stranger! I don't know who you are, but you must leave. But before the battered survivor of this holocaust can explain, he collapses. And after finding the shelter for the frozen man, Phoenix uses his atomic transistors to generate heat. Comfortable now, the old man will tell a story. The Yeti moved as if an organized army. They ravaged every dwelling. But why? They have never shown themselves much less attack villages. Ah, but they need bodies. Live, strong bodies. That is why the Yeti brushed me aside. The devil has no need for fragile men. The devil? The blow to your head dulled some senses. Come back to reality, man. Reality. Let me tell you of reality, son. At this very moment, his disciples watch this place. He knows you are here. And then, just then, as if to respond to the old man's warning, crash! 
Through the frail wooden structures, they crash. Three awesome rampaging brutes. Brute, just like the brute. They look a little bit like the brute, too. Don't move, old man. My energy field will protect you while I do my thing. What are you going to beat him? But as Ed Tyler turns from his force field, the great Himalayan mutation strikes. The man ape moves slowly, methodically towards his dazed enemy. Vice like bestial bone crushing limb enveloped the phoenix. He's trying to break me in half. He is. He's just like the brute. Feeling dizzy, starting to black out. Have to channel all my strength through one hand. Oh, man. Shoot him. Shoot him with the thing. Yeah, how do you like that, Harry? That's two down. One to go. Those are pretty good odds, don't you think? Oomph. Atom-powered former astronaut versus one large, great, abominable snowman. Undefeated. Until now. Took his ass out. And with the enemy beaten, Phoenix turns to the stricken villager. Now, what do you know about this devil, old man? Ah, so you believe me then? Yeah, he believes you now that the fucking things have shoved their way through the wall. And then tell me and I will try to save your people. Yes, I will tell. But only if you take me with you. No, god damn it. Old man, I swear to fucking god if you don't sit the fuck down. You're bruised and beaten. You'd only get yourself killed. But your magic has made me well. And I will not get in the way. Please. The one thing that has kept these old bones moving was my people. If they are dead, do you think I would wish to stay alive? Please. Desperation in the old man's voice and eyes convinced Phoenix that the wisest decision isn't always the easiest one to live with. I'm probably out of my mind, but all right, you can come along. But you must do as I say, and you must stay in my field of energy. Then I will cause it to polarize and be attracted to the energy I emit while flying. That way you can fly with ease, courtesy of Phoenix Air. So this is weird. They're, they're, Cause he's a science fiction hero based on alien technology and like advanced science, at least for the time. But now he's going into a world of mysticism and I don't really get it. What the hell is that? Truly we are doomed. You cannot beat the devil's brand of hellfire, searing heat and blinding light roar at the unsuspecting pair. The crimson haze clears and Phoenix becomes aware of an awesome presence. Holy shit, that's like the literal devil. Greetings, Phoenix. I have been expecting you. Oh, and who the hell are you? Well, you are on the right track. I am evil incarnate, the one men call Satan. He's huge, look at that. He's tall as fuck, I think. The devil. But petty mortal labels are of no concern to enlightened beings such as we, eh, Phoenix? But enough of this. I can see your concern is for the missing villagers. Well, fear not. I assure you they are now more, shall we say, worthy than they were. Something stinks here and it's not the smell of brimstone. But I'll follow this nut until I can figure out what's coming down. If nothing else, it'll make up for my missing the exorcist. Yeah, that was like a new movie at, the, at, at this point, I think. Minutes later, bolts of lightning explode from satanic hands to lift a massive boulder, a rock that conceals and inserts into hell itself. Prepare yourself, Phoenix, for a truly awesome experience. Now I know something's wrong. I'm tingling from radiation. He's using the same electronic blaster used by the aliens. He must be one of them. But how? And, what are, and what's he doing way out here? My people. He said they are within this cave. Are we in time to save them? Don't worry, my friend. If they're alive, we'll save them. Okay, so... The devil. What the fuck? Like, the devil... I... It just doesn't make sense. Just, like, randomly the devil. And is it the devil? Is it the same devil from the Grim Ghost? If you guys remember from last month in October, the Grim Ghost fought the devil... Is it the same devil? Is it different? I don't know. Maybe we'll get answers. Maybe I'm judging too much because this story is seemingly random and weird. And I don't really like that. I like to bear, there to be like thematic relevance in these stories. But who knows? Let's see. Observe, Phoenix. It is here that my captives are transformed into Yeti soldiers, an army that will overrun the earth. With disorder raging through the civilized world and hunger plinging. <sighs> oh. 
My God, I apologize. I've been working all day. I guess I'm just tired. With disorder raging through the civilized world and hunger plaguing the uncivilized earth is ripe for conquest. And you, Phoenix, can serve as my good right arm. What are you doing to my people, dear God? He's turning them into Yeti. You don't fucking listen. Since his rookie days in the U.S. astronaut program, Ed Tyler earned a reputation for impatience. And with helpless villager screams echoing in his ears, Ed Tyler feels no great urge to change his reputation now. Yeah, I'll stand next to you after I stomp on your face. You're an alien. One of the D.I.I. I knew it all along. Fool, your knowledge of that will not help you. I offered you the world, Phoenix, and you shall die. And if you resist, these peasants shall die with you. Oh, look, more Jesus imagery. With an amazing obedience, the shaggy brutes bind Phoenix to a stake and carry him off to another section of the lab. You know, you've got a good act here, Ace. Ever try making it on The Tonight Show? Your levity is ill-timed, Phoenix. Still, I shall tell you of my past. For I am proud that I alone had the courage to be unique. 5,000 years ago, I, Lucifer, was chief scientist of the Dai. And when I was banished from their Arctic headquarters for performing unsanctioned experiments, the Dai have always kept a watchful eye on me until now. Thanks to you, they are out of the way, and now nothing on Earth can stop me. You could have helped me, but chose instead to oppose me. Therefore, you will meet my greatest creation, a creature your fellow men have called the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, well, okay, that's cool. That that comes around. That all checks out. It makes sense. He's one of the aliens from thousands of years ago when they experimented on humanity. He is the fallen angel. Got it. Perfect. It's thematically relevant. All right, the Loch Ness Monster, a mutation of squid and dinosaur. And contrary to your so-called scientific theory. That's bad. I, I should not be yawning this much. He is not a vegetarian. Feast, my pet, feast. What a way to go as brunch for a sea serpent. Meanwhile, at the other end of the lab, unseen by Lucifer... The devil was so angered by the foreigner's refusal to join him, he has forgotten about me. I will show him just how worthless this old man is. Wah! Away from those controls! Away, you sniveling scum! While below the water's surface, the monster's crushing the steak so he can eat me without getting splinters on his tongue. That leaves me time to electrify the water. My body can take it, but I doubt that Godzilla here is going to like it. The water sizzles from Phoenix's electron blast in a matter of seconds. No, this shall not be. Attack him. Kill the Phoenix. That accursed old villager. I should have killed him when I had the chance. So it was the old man who's causing the explosions. Lucifer is more bananas than ever. How is the time to beat him and get the peasants out of here? But before Phoenix can act... The monster slave of a thousand years turns to his ruthless master. Down, I command you. I am your master, Lucifer. Oh, shit, it ate him. But the time for reflection, the finding of morals must wait, for there are hundreds of human lives to be saved. And so the falling walls and exploding machinery, Phoenix sends one piercing blast to create an opening. And through the opening, they swarm, pushing and shoving to escape the mountain. Meanwhile, with the villagers freed, Phoenix dodges his way through the debris. I must be nuts to try this, but the old man will die unless I find him. There he is, but oh dear lord, the alien must have blasted him. He's dead. While moments later, outside the escaping peasants whirl at the deafening sound of a final gigantic explosion. The falling mountain will bury Lucifer in his wicked laboratory forever. The devil will bother us no longer. It is justice. Let him rot in his own hell where he belongs. But what about the brave outlander? Do you think he got out in time? I do not see how. I saw him scurry against the crowd as we were escaping. But Phoenix, behind a protective force field, has escaped the blazing avalanche. Look, he comes. But how did he escape from the flaming mountain? Truly, he is blessed. You have saved us from a living hell, stranger. Tell us your name. My name is Phoenix. But it was not I who saved you. It was this old man, the shepherd Jubra. Yes, he sacrificed himself for you. He, he said his life wouldn't be worth living if his, if his people were dead. So when you return to your homes, remember this simple man, for his love saved us all. And his mission completed, Phoenix departs, 
If not for Jubra, the devil's plans might have succeeded. I hope his people honor him as he deserves. I doubt it, though. How could these simple folk realize the scope of the whole thing? Hell, I'm not sure I understand it myself. Look, he flies like a bird, like an angel, an angel of mercy. Why does he leave us so soon? He has delivered us from the clutches of Satan, and now he moves on to others. He is truly a messenger of God. And the grateful villagers bow and pray to the man, Phoenix. Oh man, look at these other beautiful Atlas comics. Tiger Man, we covered that one. The Brute covered that one. And John Target Manstalker covered that one. This is great. The playlist is almost complete. It's pretty cool. But that's the end of the story, but we still have more pages. So what the fuck is this shit? Oh man, I'm gonna have to do something else about this. No, I guess we just have to read it. We're, well, we're only at 15 minutes. Alright, we'll, we'll just read it. Terror was one of their weapons, and they used it well. These merciless underworld savages who called themselves the Rat Pack. Our little pets won't begin gnawing at your flesh right away, Gerald, but what that happens when they get hungry? Sorry to break up the fun and games, boys, but it's extermination time. Overly lenient judges, unscrupulous attorneys, and greedy corrupt politicians have immunized the criminals from just punishments. But now a mysterious cape stranger, unburdened by law, has ventured forth. There he is. A man of unknown identity who will soon come to be called the Dark Avenger. Hey, better blow, weirdo, or I'll... Or you'll what? Bang, bang, bang. You prove your proficiency with that weapon. Forget it. Besides, I'd prefer to demonstrate my own skills, friend. I don't know what zoo you split from, but right now, Cook, you've made yourself an endangered species. Wrong, Crumb. It's your kind who will eventually become extinct. And just to hasten that day. I'll have you loose in a moment. Those punks have a warped sense of humor. Frightening someone half to death is their idea of fun. Thanks. In this part of town, not many dudes buy into someone else's trouble. It wasn't trouble. It was a pleasure. Who are you, man? An agent of some new branch of law enforcement? I'm afraid the answer to that is no. I'm a private citizen. I see. Then I suppose you're going to turn these lawbreakers over to the proper authorities? I'd prefer that you handle that chore. I don't really want to reveal my identity to anyone. Very well. Call me the Dark Avenger. Goodbye. Even though I've never seen him before, I have the oddest feeling that he's someone I know. But it's not his name, it's his deeds that matter. Hello, police headquarters, you'd better send a paddy wagon at 4th and Green. I've single-handedly apprehended a gang of criminals and I'd like to place that I'd like to place in custody. I like this guy. He's a little bit Batman, Dark Avenger. He's just, I, I like him. He's very elemental. Meanwhile, moving through the splurring speed... The Dark Avenger arrives at his destination within seconds. Have to get into our apartment and remove the suit fast. Before my brother Gerald gets home. I don't want him to put two and two together. It could spoil my secret. We were on our way home when they stepped out of the alley. Hey look, who's, our, who's using our street? Huh? Don't this twerp actor and his brother know that this is the Rat Pack territory? Nah, these dummies don't know nothing. We're gonna have to learn them. Get inside that building, crumbs. Shut up. Just march down into the cellar. Arthur, do something. I'm frightened. Take it easy, Gerald. We'll think of a way to escape. And as soon as the Rat Pack got us down into the cellar, I'll bet Pretty Face Gerald would have to hate his cheeks ripped open, huh? Yeah, we'd better become a big movie star with scars on his kisser. Hey, leave my bro alone. Or don't you listen. That was a real dumb move, Arthur. Can you believe this dude? He's got to be nuts. What about it, Flip? Should I blow him away? Nah, I get a kick out of having Arthur around. See? Ah, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, hero. Recreation hour is over. It's time to get down to business. Anybody that walks through Rat Pack territory pays a tariff. You go to hell, mister. I wouldn't pay you... Hey, Arthur isn't the one to put heat on Flip. He'd let you beat him sideways without cracking up. But Gerald here, he's the cooperative kind, ain't he? Look, Arthur was $200 at home. It's money he saved to buy a rebuilt mon motor for his car. Ha! I knew you were smart, Gerald. 
Now let me hear you tell your brother to go get that bread. The whole $200. Isn't your life worth that much, you creep? Yes. Yes, I'll do anything you say. So they held Gerald as hostage while I supposedly went back home to get $200. Only that's where they made their mistake. Because I had my Dark Avenger costume hidden in the closet at home. I put it on and returned to that cellar and put an end to the Rat Pack's reign of terror. And I owe it all to my flexible suit of indestructible metal. One night as I left the rare metal factory after working late, I saw a meteorite flash to earth. I followed it and I found it. I took it back inside the factory where our chemists had been experimenting with developing a new soft metal spacesuit for astronauts. After analyzing the meteorite and finding a lot of common chem chemicals and minerals, I found one unknown metal with an atomic structure different from anything ever found on Earth. That really excited me. After that, I sneaked back into the factory evening for weeks and tried melting the material at various temperatures until I put it in the nuclear heated oven and used maximum temperature. I used a radioactive isotope to combine the molten meteor with another metal for flexibility and poured the mixture into the mold for the astronaut's suit. But none were successful. I, could tell, I couldn't tell anyone about my discovery because I hadn't been authorized to use my company's lab. Besides, I hadn't kept notes, which meant I could never duplicate the suit again. Arthur! Oh, hi, Mom. I didn't hear you come in. Come inside the living room, Arthur. I want to have a word with you. Hey! You're back too, huh, Gerald? No, thanks to you. I met Gerald coming home on the bus, and he told me how you deserted him this evening. Left him alone with three dangerous criminals. How could you do that to your own brother? Uh, he doesn't look like he's harmed. That's because he heroically overpowered those ruffians. Gerald isn't a coward like you. Mother, I could do with some kind of snack after that harrowing experience. Of course, Gerald. I'll fix you something real tasty. I could go for a piece of pie myself, Mom. Get it yourself, bum. Or are you afraid the pie might attack you? What? I don't know how I feel about that one. I'm not impressed. The Dark Avenger, he's kind of cool, but... You know, it is what it is. When it comes to Atlas Comics, you're not dealing with grade A material. These are B-class stories, but... You know, it is what it is. It's weird. He just, he has a metal suit, and it's bulletproof. Whatever. He's a street-level hero. I'll dig into it. We'll see if he appears in the next issue or not. I don't know. But, as far as Phoenix is concerned, there's only one more story, and it's actually a doozy. I actually like it. I'm a little bit excited for it. But you'll see why uh, when I pop it out. But for now, that's the end of this one. If you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more comics with me, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and donate to my Patreon so that I can do bigger projects. <sighs> but in the meantime, nerds, remember, stay heroic.